Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's Word to you today. Now, are you ready? Let's call for our daily bread. Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand my daily bread. Give it to me, Lord, and I receive it. It's walking in me, in my life, and around me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, when you say these things, expect a miracle because surely it will come. Praise God. Now, let's go into today's broadcast and, and, and continue what I began to share with you. Um, we've been talking about walking in God's um, spiritual financial intelligence. Let's just pray. Father, we bless you for today's broadcast. Thank you for everyone listening and watching right now. Thank you for your spirit of truth who guides us into every truth. I declare even now, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'll remind you again that the purpose of this broadcast is to sharpen your understanding about how God works in the area of our finances. You need to understand that. Why are we talking about finances? Because it is very important. To a great extent, it has a lot to do with everything in your life. If you don't master it, then you become a slave to it. That's why I'm sharing these things with you. So you truly know how to, uh, how not to become a slave to mammon, but rather trust God. See, listen, it's not all about pray and receive and miracle money and, and things like that. There are foundational truths that hold and guides these things. And now those are the things that if you have go to sleep, money will come to you. But if you don't have these truths, see, Jesus made a very powerful statement when the disciples asked him, why do you teach in parables? He said, because unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And that's what I've been sharing with you. They are the mysteries of the kingdom. Praise God. So, so if, and, and he said, he that has, more shall be given to him and he will have abundance. And the one who doesn't have the knowledge of how the kingdom works, even the physical thing he has will be taken away from him. So I'm taking all this time to teach you the, the foundation, the background of what is making me act the way I do, what is making me so relaxed where finances are concerned, what is making me focused in the kingdom of God and not on money, you see? Uh, this is the secret. This is what is working behind my mind. And how did I get these things? The Spirit of the Lord taught me, see? So it's in fulfillment of the scriptures. You know, some people get angry when you say, God taught me. You say, eh, why can't you say you read it? I, I, I didn't read. You see, now I, I read a lot of books. Understand what I'm saying? So I'm not saying don't read books. Don't listen to them. I listen to several ministers. I, I listen to a lot of people. But you see, I never form an opinion on a truth except I hear from the Holy Spirit. And he's our teacher. John said he's the one that will teach you all things. Jesus said when he comes, he will teach and he will guide you into all truth. That's true in my life. I can't lie against the Lord, praise God. And I can't lie against my own experience. 
Praise God. So, so that's why I'm sharing all these things with you. So yesterday we got talking about how the Lord taught us, taught me concerning tithing. And, and how I began to realize that, man, this is, this is a big... So that's why, you know, I can never agree with people who say, eh, eh, we are not supposed to be tithing anymore, tithing. No, when I hear such people, based on what the Lord has taught me, I know they don't understand the subject of tithing. I mean, my apologies to them, but, but that's just the truth. They don't understand the message of tithing. Now, turn your Bibles with me to Deuteronomy chapter 8. I will show you something. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Now, you know the scripture. You, you can't hear anybody teach on finances without the scripture. But many times we don't know the depth of what he was talking about here. So he says in verse 18, chapter 8, Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18, he says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Now watch this. That he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Now, he said, you will remember the Lord your God. Remember him how? For he is the one who gives you the power to get wealth. Now, understand something. One, he is telling you that God gives power to get wealth. And then he says something. You have a responsibility of remembering the Lord who gives power to get wealth. All right. Now then, he said, the reason he gives you the power to get wealth is so that he will establish the covenant that he swore with your fathers. Think about this. God swore to Abraham. He was referring to Abraham here when he says your fathers. And Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, now, listen. When he said, the reason he gives us power to get wealth is so that he will establish the covenant which he swore to Abraham. And now, okay, he swore to Abraham that he will bless him. And through him, all the families of the earth. I wanted to take note of that part of the blessing. All the families of Israel know all the Jewish family, no. All the families of the earth. <laughs> families in India, families in Nigeria, families in, in that your village, families in Asia, in, 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 in think about it, in Congo, in, in Australia, in New Zealand, all over the world. All the families of the earth. Whoa, God was having a covenant with Abraham. And then he said, I'm going to bless you and your seed. And then he says, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So when God was dealing with this man, Abraham, God was thinking about the whole earth. How am I going to get the blessing to reach every part of this earth? And then he, he, he said, Abraham, listen, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to bless you and then I'll bless your seed. Kalabayadabush. Now he says here, Moses is talking to the children of Israel and giving them God's command. And then he said, hey guys, you will remember. He said, you shall. is a command. Not what shall is, is forceful command. You shall remember the Lord your God. So the question then is, how do I remember God? Is he just saying, say, I remember God. Well, you know, on some say, how, 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 what's going on here? Like, how do you get to know? So, mm, it's God, though. It's God, though. It's God. I think that's what he was talking about. No, he was talking about tithing. Alakaya baya. You know, when, you see, when we say these things, this is sometimes when, when a preacher comes up and begins to talk about tithing, you know, what, where your mind goes to, this man wants to collect money from me. Nobody's after your money. At least I'm not after your money. 
I'm after you. I, 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 don't, I don't need your money. I'm telling you the truth. Because, you see, listen, listen. Like I told you yesterday, God told me, he said, I've got a lot of money on the earth. So it's not in my place to come look for your money. I don't have any business with your money. Praise <laughs> God. I've got business with my father. Who's got business with blessing me? And hear me. If he commands you to give me money, then you have to obey him. I don't even have to look at you. You have to obey him. And it's the same thing. Now, now, when he says, you shall remember the Lord your God. He was talking about tithing. What's he talking about? Every time you get blessed, you remember one thing. Ah, Beroshi, listen, if you catch this, really, you are beginning to enter into God's intelligence where money is concerned. So when I get blessed, the first thing that comes to my mind is what? I remember the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whoa, Lord, this is, this is just another truth. That you promised to bless me, bless me, and, and now I have received uh, this money. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, you know what? I'm going to honor you first with the tithe of this money. And then I take out that tithe and having in my mind that he is concerned that all the families of the earth be blessed. So I know I'm blessing him with my tithe. I say, Lord, thank you. You just, re you just blessed me now. Lord, I just received this money. Whoa, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And I take out that tithe. And I say, Lord, you know, every blessing you give to me, you've got a part in it. Praise God. So, so this is your part. See, you know, and, and, and you're just rejoicing over it and rejoicing over the tithe and trusting in the Lord and blessing his name. And then the Lord commands, he says, son, I want you to give that tithe to so, so and so. I said, okay, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll obey. I'll obey you. And then I, I make a call or make a visit if someone I know directly, you know, I make a visit and I say, hey, how are you doing? The Lord spoke to me and said, I should give you this. Or call the person on the phone. The Lord said, I should give you this. What do you think is going on? The covenant that God established with Abraham is being brought into fulfillment. Why? Because suddenly a family becomes blessed because of Abraham. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm over here. Oh, I, I, listen, I've got beautiful testimonies. You know, from people who tied like this. A dear sister of mine shared with me how, you know, uh, you know how she, um, someone was talking to her about a certain pastor that she doesn't know. And person was just talking to the talking to her about the pastor, how um, his his child was in the hospital, and then he he called the pastor called him, you know, to send to help with the hospital bills and stuff. And that, now this, this gist was coming like weeks after this thing had happened. And, and then after they finished the conversation, the Spirit of God ministered to her and said, I want you to send 50,000 to that pastor that you were being told about. And then she was like, well, I don't know him. I said, now, now that was tight, see? The Lord said, send 50,000 to that pastor. So she called this person, please, can you give me that pastor's number? Because the Lord gave me an instruction concerning him. And then she obeyed the Lord and sent the money. Now, guess what? The pastor, because in, in, in when she sent, transferred the money to him, to his account number, she had written the person's name, you know, that's, you know. So the pastor saw the name and then, oh, I know this person. 
you know, and calls the person like, hey, I saw an alert. Is it your name? I mean, I mean, you know, I, I saw your name in the narration of the alert. So like, oh, yeah, um, someone I know actually God said the person is like, no, I, I need to talk to the person. He said, okay, so check, exchange phone numbers. And then the pastor called and said, you don't know what you just did. Like, oh, sorry, you know, I'm like, no, seriously. Now, the pastor has been preaching without the microphone for a long while. And then he began to release his faith for a microphone. So that day he made up his mind, said, Lord, today, I'm going to, on Sunday, I'm going to preach with a microphone. Now, this was a Saturday. He got to a shop, priced the microphone, and then they said the microphone was 50,000 naira. And he, he actually said, look, can I deposit my phone with this little money I have? When I bring the balance, they said no. And he left that place. He was hurt. He was like, Lord, I have to preach tomorrow with a microphone. And then suddenly he received that alert, 50,000 naira. He bought the microphone, preached on Sunday with his microphone. Now, what do you think happened? Through you, all the families of the earth be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. I'll talk to you again about this tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.